Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. This video will be about going on cross country, earning my silver badge, which is about 31.1 miles from Soaring Society of America. So be sure and look us up. This is the glider I'll be flying. It's called a PW5 and it makes an excellent cross country trainer. Here are the specifications of the glider. It has about a 44 foot wingspan, weighs about 400 pounds empty, with a gross weight of about 660 pounds. Typically I fly this glider between about 35 miles an hour up to around 70 miles an hour, generally. The never exceed speed is 140 miles an hour. Our club at TSA owns three of these, and can you believe it? It only costs $21 an hour to fly. $21 an hour, that's amazing. You can get some excellent reading material from Bob Wonder. He has all kinds of helpful information, and this book is about how to achieve the silver badge. If you Google Bob's name, you'll find many other books about flying gliders. And more information for all things gliders, look up Soaring Society of America. SSA has tons of information about glider flying. So just Google it and you'll find it. There are three steps to get your silver badge. One is a climb from 3,000 feet from a low point, and that's relatively easy. Another requirement is doing the cross country, which is about 31.1 miles, or about 50 kilometers. Another thing, you don't need to do all three on the same flight. You can do the 3,000 foot climb one flight, Another day do the five hour, and then another day too for the 31 mile cross country flight. All right, let's take a look at the map. The distance that you're gonna fly is measured in a straight line. And as you see here, I have a straight line distance of 36 miles. I wanted to make sure I got that minimum 31.1 mile flight. And it's measured in a straight line. You can't use the zigzags and add them up. When I planned out my cross country, one of the things I wanted to do was have airports or grass strips that I could land out at. And you'll see there's an additional one, two, three, four, five airports that I could land if I find no additional lift. So I started my flight from TSA. That's on the far right hand side. From there, about eight miles to Lupscombe, which is a grass strip. From there, where the green arrows are, that's Embry. And that has a 1,600 foot asphalt runway, which is sufficient for the PW-5. My next checkpoint or waypoint is Cleburne, which is another seven miles from Embry. And Cleburne is a regular airport, so they have a runway plenty long for a, for a land out area if you need it. And next, going to the left, we'll be headed toward landings. That's another private uh, strip and it's a uh, I believe it's cement runway and that's about 10 miles from Cleburne. From landings airfield would be Pecan Plantation and that's a couple more miles. So the overall flight as measured in a straight line was 36 miles which is sufficient for the silver distance badge. Once you have obtained the distance there's no requirement to get back to your original base. You can land out, go, go someplace, land, have a hamburger if you want. It still qualifies. So one of the good things about this cross country, it gives me a lot of land out areas, which is a good thing when you're flying gliders. I was fortunate to turn around and get back to base. So that was kind of cool. So the total cross country distance was about 72 miles. Now let me show you this next image. I'm using a built-in GPS data logger to provide this information in real time. Starting on the bottom left-hand side, that's your ground speed, not air speed. GPS can only calculate ground speed. Top left-hand corner, that's your flight time. Moving over to the right top center, that's your compass heading. Moving further to the right, see that blue squiggly line with that red dot? That's actually to scale my flight, going to Plantation and then back to TSA. Top right hand corner, that's my rate of climb indicator. 
as measured in feet per minute. And to finish up on the bottom right hand corner, that's your altimeter. Okay, let's get ready for takeoff. Okay, we're going to try to go for the silver distance, which is 50 kilometers or about 31.1 miles. We'll be flying from TSA over to Pecan Plantation, and that should be enough distance. If I can't make it, oh well, we'll try again. Checklist. Gave him the signal, here we go. On takeoff, we have to be extremely focused, no distractions here. Want to keep it no more than about six feet off the ground to allow the tow plane to accelerate even faster to get airborne. Part of your training will be doing low tow releases. You can actually turn this glider around if you're above 200 feet and come back and land downwind. Pretty amazing. Okay, getting ready for tow release. Clear the area. You'll want to pull up into a climbing turn while the tow plane does a left hand descending turn so you can separate as fast as possible. So flying the silver distance, there's no speed requirement. This isn't a race against time or how fast you fly. I'm going to fly conservative. I'm going to work the thermals as high as I can go and then start out for my first checkpoint. I'd say for about the first 30 minutes of the flight, I'm going to stay within gliding range of TSA. I'm going to work the thermals, see how good the lift is before I depart to my first checkpoint, which is Lupscombe, and that's about eight miles away. So at this point, I've gained enough energy to start working my way toward Lupscombe, which is about eight miles to the west. So at this point, I've made it to Lupscombe with a little bit of altitude to spare. I'm basically right over the top of it as I'm looking for additional thermals. So at this point, I'm still getting lower. I haven't found that one thermal that I need to at least carry on with this cross country. I keep thinking to myself, come on, I gotta find this one last thermal so I don't have to land at Lupscombe. And fortunately, I did work one thermal here that gave me sufficient height energy to continue on this flight. Now that I'm above 4,500 feet, I have sufficient height energy to make it to my next checkpoint or waypoint, which is Embry. And that's about seven miles away. So from this altitude, I can make Embry without the need of an additional thermal to continue to Embry. But if I get lower, I'm certainly going to work another thermal just to play it safe. You'll notice that red dot on the top right hand corner is moving closer to the next checkpoint or waypoint which is going to be Cleburne and that's a regular size airport. And I'll tell you friends it was just a beautiful day. Look at those cumulus clouds. Those cumulus clouds are a glider's best friend. You'll notice I've got a map with me and I'm also using that OD flight computer you see on the right. I use both. If the OD were to fail or batteries run down, I still got a map. And that's going to continue to work whether I have batteries or not. <laughs> we have about two more miles to Cleburne. I can see it right in front of me. I am descending and I'm thinking, well, if I have to land out, this is a perfect place to do it. Fortunately, I did find another thermal over Cleburne area and started to climb, uh, probably get up to about 4,000 feet. So again, I'm just flying conservative. I'm going to work this thermal as high as I can go before I'll continue on my next checkpoint. Now that I've gained over 4,000 feet, I do have enough height energy to start working my way towards landings. And that's another private airport and it has an asphalt runway. From Cleburne to Landings Airport is about 10 miles. So if I find another thermal as I'm getting closer to Landings, I will take advantage of it and circle just to give me more height energy, make it a little safer for me, that kind of thing. You'll notice that red dot on the top right hand corner is getting closer 
to my next destination, which is Landings Airfield. So I have sufficient height or altitude to make it to Pecan Plantation. Once I get over that area, I'm going to fly just a little bit further to make sure that I've got the distance. Then I'm going to turn around and start heading back, back to Cleburne. And I'll tell you, friends, this is one of the most challenging things you can do in your flying career. You know, learning to fly gliders, it's going to make you a better pilot. I want to work this additional thermal, plug in my coordinates in my OD, and start heading back toward Cleburne, which is about 12 miles away from here. So when you're working on your silver distance, you don't have to make it back to base. That's not a requirement. You can land out anywhere, but you still have that distance. So it's not a problem. But it sure was nice being able to fly all the way back, back to base in this flight. So as I'm heading back, I'm now over 6,000 feet. Notice that red dot's getting closer to TSA. So at this point, I know I can make it to TSA without finding any additional thermals. And I'll tell you, friends, it'll definitely get you a warm, fuzzy feeling when you know you've got it made back to base without any more thermals. Now that I have sufficient height energy to make it back to TSA, I'm going to start putting my nose down and increasing my airspeed. This is what glider people call final glide. The objective on final glide is to be at least 1,000 feet above your landing area or higher. So as I approach TSA, I'm going to start putting that nose down and increasing my, my ground speed. In normal flight, I'd generally be flying between 50 and 60 miles an hour. But on this final ride, I know I have the runway made, so I'm going to put that nose down so I can work my altitude lower to reach the goal of about a thousand feet above TSA. Okay, at this time I'm probably about another mile or two from TSA. I still have that nose down. Now, I'm just now almost over the top of TSA. I can see the runway on my left hand side. So the next part of this video will be the landing sequence. I'll begin to slow down and I'll make a left hand turn to enter the pattern on a left downwind for runway 18. My objective on the downwind is to be about 1500 feet. As I turn downwind, one of the things we want to do when we get low to the ground for landing is to speed up. We certainly don't want to be in the pattern low and slow, as they call it. I just checked my spoilers momentarily. Everything is looking good, and I'm not using that altimeter to determine uh, my landing pattern. You use angles. You look out the window toward that runway. That's part of your training. One of the things I learned was undercarriage, speed, trim, air brake, look and land. You just say that over and over. Look and land, look and land. So at this point, I'll be turning left base. I do have enough sufficient height energy and speed energy to make the runway. Definitely don't want to be low and slow. I notice I got the spoilers pulled out probably about 25% of this time. Looking at the angle here, making sure that I have that sufficient height and speed to make it safely to the runway, and I do. It's just all part of your training, not a problem. Okay, let's just watch the remaining of the landing. Down, we continue to fly this glider until we're at a full stop. You can't just sit around and relax. 
keep it straight, keep the wings level as long as you can, stop, and there's all you got to do. Woo! Silver, made it, and back. So if you want more information about flying all things glider, just look up Soaring Society of America for more things about gliders. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure and look up all my other flying videos. And come on out to TexasSoaring.org. That's where we fly. You guys have a great day, and we'll see you in the air next time. Bye-bye.